okay, substitution reactions and the way that they actually are done and created. Now, I said IB chemistry. Well, it's IB chemistry or first year university organic chemistry. Here's what you have to know about substitution reactions, that they follow a process. And the process, well, is three steps. Initiation, propagation, and termination. And what do those uh, concepts, or what do those terms mean conceptually? Okay, well, first of all, here is the chlorine molecule, and it's going to bash into this uh, a molecule of methane, let's say, and we're going to get a substitution reaction that takes place. Well, the steps by which this happens is that the chlorine is going to separate and form two chlorine atoms. You have to initiate the process by adding enough energy to break apart the chlorines. That's initiation. So initiation is to take that halogen that you've got there, and you're going to split it into two, actually it's called homolytic separation because it's separating, lytic means lysis means to break down. Homo, they break down into two equally charged, similarly charged particles here. And these guys right here are ready to react. So that's initiation. And then what happens is that a reaction starts to happen and starts to propagate. So that's called propagation, the next step. So what happens is, now the substitution takes place. So take, this, take one atom of the chlorine, Put one in your pocket, because that's important. Now take the other atom of chlorine that you've got here. Joink and the substitution reaction takes place where now you've got HCl form. Remember, that's one of the products of a substitution reaction. So there's HCl that takes off. And now you've got this guy right here. And that is a carbon atom that is ready to react with something or bond to something else. It could be this chlorine over here, but what could happen to propagate the reaction is that it can react with another chlorine molecule, right? So now you've got another chlorine molecule here. There's an attraction for this, what we call positive, it's a nucleophile, and it's a positive thing. Don't, don't worry about the term yet. <laughs> and this chemical right here was gonna attract that negative chlorine atom because chlorine's got a lot of lone pair electrons around it that make it kind of negative in terms of its polarity or charge. And it's attracted here, and choink, you actually get now your chloromethane actually formed, right? Um, so what happens then is that now you've got your product. Okay, so but now you're going to terminate the reaction in the end and it's going to finish and anything that's loose has to get all sealed up. So what can actually be loose and get sealed up? Well, we had that one chlorine molecule, but we had that other extra one from before. So now in the termination phase, we can actually have chlorines rebond to form chlorine and take off. If we had any of these radicals left over, that's what it's called, it's called a radical, well what we can do is we can seal it up with some other chlorines to form more of these molecules. We can actually, if there was another one of these radicals here that was floating around in solution, well it could actually bond together and form ethane as well. So that's termination of the reaction. So again, what are the steps that you really have to know? You have to know that there's going to be initiation, where you take the halogen and break it down, propagation, where you actually then do the substitution to come up with your molecule, uh, but probably from another molecule, a free molecule of chlorine, which then leaves you with some radicals to tie up in the end for termination phase, and that can be termination uh, to form chlorine molecules or whatever other halogens that you have, and then maybe some other radicals bonding together to form larger types of alkanes.